<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi. We are coming to you live from Newegg Studios in Southern California. This is Newegg Now. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. We, we totally weren't surprised by the beginning of our own show. That didn't just happen. Thank you for joining us today, wherever you happen to be watching, on the YouTubes, the Twitches, the Mixers. Are we on the Facebooks? We're on the Facebooks. We're on Facebook. Yeah, we're on Twitter. We're all I, over I the think place. we're streaming pretty much everywhere. Everywhere you could happen to catch a stream. So, hello, world, to everyone out there watching right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so wherever you're watching us right now, we want to encourage you to open up Newegg.com slash Newegg now because that's where you can watch along, join in in the chat, and see some of the products that we'll be featuring on the show today sure. all in one place. Yeah. And we've got a big show for you today because we are right smack dab in between two of the biggest industry events of the year. I just got back from Computex. <laughs> I was going to make the boy in my arms tired. Joke. I mean, and it but totally legit, boy, are you tired because yeah. jet lag. <laughs> I, apparently, recovering from jet lag is not a thing I do well. But I had a blast in, in, in Taipei, and uh, we got to check out all of the hottest PC hardware uh, that was shown off there. And mm -hmm. next week, we have the biggest gaming event of the year, E3. Yes! So, uh, so coming up on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at some of the videos that Juan and the Newegg Studios team put together when they were over in Taiwan for Computex. Uh, but there's a lot more than we will be able to fill fit in just one live stream. So yeah. make sure that you check out Newegg on YouTube so that you can see all of the videos from that event that Juan and team made. So today we're just <laughs> going to look at a few of the highlights, some favorite moments, along with some featured products related to the companies that we'll be discussing, which you can see right now on that Newegg.com slash New Egg Now page that I mentioned earlier. For sure. Okay. We got to dive in. Um, hot breaking news served fresh. The glowing neon sign is on. I uh, just revealed this morning about Google's Stadia game streaming platform. Uh, if you have thoughts about this, leave some thoughts in the comments below. Join us in those live chats. I'm going to stop talking like a news broadcaster here in just a second. I was, I was running with it. Um, so I, I think... Maybe we can all agree, or just me. The biggest news to come out of the Stadia stream this morning was Baldur's Gate 3! Baldur's Gate 3. Um, this is not out. getting enough respect across the and internet. And made by Larian Studios, who made Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, which are some of the best RPGs on, uh, on PC. I, I have a lot. I have a lot of feelings lot about of feelings. it, but I'm going to calm myself down because RIP headphone users. <laughs> um, but seriously, uh, games, Baldur's yes. Gate 3, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Ghost Recon? Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Doom, Doom, Doom Eternal, the new Tomb Raider trilogy, Final Fantasy 15, Destiny, Destiny 2, 2, with Cross Save. Yeah, that's epic. And Metro Exodus and a lot Both more. Show. So starting in November, you can play using the $130 Founders Edition, which will need the included Chromecast Ultra. Uh, but the platform will become more more widely available in 2020 mm -hmm. is what we're told and you'll be able to buy the standalone controller for $70. Uh, the official subscription service is Stadia Pro which will be 10 bucks a month. Gives you access Good. to the service's games at 4K resolution 60 frames per second and, uh, and the service will include some games free while others will be available for standalone purchases. We're still sort of working out all the mechanics on that. Um, I am skeptical okay. of a 4K 60 frame per second game stream, which only needs around a 30 to 40 megabit per second data connection. You know what? This is what we keep being told is the future. Yes. But I am with you, Juan, until I get it in my player hands. I don't know that I believe it. I have seen certain demos of technology like this in a very controlled yes. room, a very controlled atmosphere, but when it's actually out in the wild, it remains to be seen how it's gonna work, how it's gonna work in certain areas, et cetera. Um, so let us know your thoughts, everybody. I see uh, Grim X in, on a mixer says, skeptical is right. Mm -hmm. um, I also see Fat Produce on YouTube. It's like, what? what? My gods, I love Baldur's, Baldur's Gate. Gate. And Icewind Dale. Um, but, and I should also <laughs> mention that even though the Baldur's Gate 3 announcement was made during the Stadia live stream, they did announce that it will also be available yes. for PC. I, I mean, like, I'm very concerned <laughs> about making sure that I'm playing it on my newly built rig that I need. It's fancy. It's going to be great. I need it there. It's going to be great. But we, we've seen sort of the proof of concept. They had Project Stream. Yes. Google was showing that off. 720p gaming at around a 10 megabit per second data connection. I, we've seen this as a proof of concept. It's a lot like, you know, when you're showing off new networking gear. Oh my God, I got this amazing fast download because mm -hmm. you were the only one on the network. 
Uh, so yeah, so maybe one might concerned. link it to, I saw New Egg Dennis in Twitch saying uh, HBO couldn't handle Game of Thrones, <laughs> and that's one direction content. Well, and also, I'll, I'll be real curious to see uh, how this how this actually interacts with these other services. They're saying like you fire up a Chrome browser, you can play directly through that. You're mm -hmm. playing on a Chromecast, and I, they're showing off Mortal Kombat style gameplay. You can't have latency. You can't mm -hmm. have frames of lag in a game like that. I, again, I, I want this to work, and I want Google to show this off as like, this is a legit mm -hmm. service that can go out there. But I'll also be curious to see what the response is. I have to believe Microsoft is working on something server side. They've got their amazing Game Pass service. I have to believe yeah. that Valve probably has a long-term plan for my Steam library to be accessible anywhere I want to play games over a data connection. They've been working on Steam Link and other types of mobility solutions. So again, like I want Google to kind of blaze this trail so that we get more competition from other companies to follow up. I agree, and I can, I've kind of said since the beginning of the Stadia announcement that I feel like if any company has the money and the infrastructure to maybe pull it off, it could be Google, but I, I do think we're a ways out from that yet. Uh, yeah. Burn Taco 94 in the Twitch chat says, the problem yes. with that connection speed is most places are not built for that infrastructure. Many mm -hmm. places barely get five to 10, if not by a major city, yeah. I, I mean, I agree completely with you. Agree. It, it completely is going to depend on where you are. And I like this. Part of me likes the idea of hardware not mattering and it can mm -hmm. be on any device. But the PC enthusiast in me is like, oh. That's, like, I hope that that component of it doesn't go away. Well, I, and also, we, we, were, um, we were talking with some of the other ninjas and with Mike mm -hmm. um, from New Egg Plays. Like, gaming is already, digital content, digital media is already a little fragile. Yeah. So if we're moving more of these things over to subscription and streaming services, as soon as something is not profitable, it evaporates or a license gets lost and then you can't go back and play it again. Yeah. And this is already fragile for movies. You know, if a movie is not popular, it just sort of disappears. Think about all those classic games which are just now not findable and not playable because they just sort of disappeared. So, I mean, I think there are some long-term ramifications, some things that we need to be kind of conscious and present for. And I hope that that means that the idea of owning a game in a library that you can control doesn't completely go away. Yeah, that's that's... We could do an entire episode just on that and True what story. it means to own a game. So, I, I mean, that's, that's Stadia. Uh, again, an exciting announcement on, on the, uh, the precipice of E3 coming down the pipe. Right. Uh, but, you know, speaking of gaming, we're in the last years of the PS4's reign. And people are turning their attention to the PS5. And that was a subject of one of our viewer, our video viewer polls that we put out on the New Egg YouTube channel recently. Uh, you, you hosted that one. Yeah, so. so we only have a few confirmed details about the PS5 so far. It'll be based on RDNA architecture, yep. part of AMD's Navi, Navi. GPU line. Yep. It will feature an ultra fast SSD and it will have a third gen Ryzen AMD CPU. <laughs> yep. And uh, hey, that's a good teaser for your Computex re recap coverage that's coming up, Juan. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a second more in detail. <laughs> Um, but also going back to the PS5, reportedly it'll support 4K graphics at a 120 hertz refresh rate, and there will be some way to transfer save files between console generations. Like it's a tall order. Yeah, that makes that makes me happy. I, again, that was a rough transition PS3 to PS4. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's still a lot we don't know about PS5, mm -hmm. but just from those few details, we're looking at a machine with some serious and potentially pricey hardware. Yeah, so, you know, we were kind of talking about uh, in the video and I think also off camera. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what made the video cut in the end, but there was a whole conversation about, you know, does... There was a lot of buzz. Where is then the line or are we really melding the place between living room PCs and consoles, especially if that price point jumps yep. up? So our poll question on YouTube, we asked you all to take your best guess. How much do you think the PlayStation 5 will cost Vegas when it hits odds. the market? Viewers 100. could vote for three to 400, four to 500, five to 600, or over 9,000. Yeah. So um, poll results, uh, the, the votes are in. 62% of those who voted on YouTube predicted it would come in between five and $600. 22% said between four and $500, and only 4% said it would be less than 400. I think that's the smart, 
smart money right there. I mean, eventually. I guess it's just, <laughs> at launch, <laughs> okay, no, no, probably not. Uh, really, really used right before the PS6. I right? got my PS5 for under $400. Uh, Raymond Shades on YouTube said, uh, don't you guys remember how much the PS3 cost when it first came out? And uh, <laughs> it was apparently about $400 for a 20 gigabyte model and $500 for the 60 gigabyte model. Well, you should model. want to work overtime to buy the PS3, remember. I mean, you remember I'll, that from the press conference? They were like, you should be proud to invest even more money. No, it's just me? I don't remember that. I remember but that. But I have worked overtime at many a jobs <laughs> to, to buy, buy gaming, gaming stuff. stuff. I, yeah, I get it. Uh, do you want to get this from Di uh, uh, Diopolo? Sure. Uh, Diopolo10, also on YouTube, says, uh, well, for one thing, I don't see Sony willing to sell the PS5 at $399 because no. that would likely mean taking a huge loss on every sell. Yes, they've often Probably. sold consoles at a loss before, but this time the oh margins God. just seem too large. Oh the PS5 God. isn't going to run games at 8 k uh, though movies and such are a possibility. I'd still expect it to be sold at around $599. I think that's probably reasonable. This is from uh, Leonardo Takian. I thought home consoles were supposed to be cheaper than PC. Right? If the price is in gaming PC range, then I'll just get a gaming PC. That's what I'm saying! Like the one we built <laughs> for the last Newegg Now. Yeah. It was like, uh, we were in that $500 pocket for a reasonable 1080p, 60 frame per second gaming PC. Mm. And from Michael Mann, uh, 400, they fear for the future of consoles, they are not going to risk killing the PS5 with a high price point. Yeah, it seems like everyone's uh, pretty much in agreement on all chats right now that if you're if the price point is going to be eight hundred dollars or more, you mm. might as well just get a PC at that right. point. And uh, like maybe the ones we've discussed before, the small form factors, the Nook, something like that that is roughly console size but has more performance. Um, if what, you're going to be going what, that I mean, way and and moddable, but like do we don't think? know if the PS5 is going to be moddable. I, that, that's a huge deal. Even if you are paying for PC-like performance, can you upgrade it? And if I'm gonna spend 800 bucks on something, I would like to be able to do that. <laughs> well, but what, what do you think? So, PlayStation 5? Yeah. Wh what, what, what kind of strategy do you think they're gonna launch with? I think they're gonna go out there saying, you know, uh, kind of like they did with the PS4, like, our performance is better. Mm -hmm. We're coming out, we're the highest quality product if you want the highest quality product go with us i don't know that they're even going to mention pc gaming because no. i feel like they never tackle that it's always against the other console and their last year of exclusives i think set them aside they, they're not worried about pc they've done very well in the exclusives department but as another teaser for e3 coming up we saw <laughs> microsoft acquire so many wonderful indie yep. studios last year and announced those partnerships last year that I'm hoping to see Microsoft come out of the gate this year with a lot more exclusives of their own. What, how do you feel about the PS5 pricing? I will be very surprised mm -hmm. if we don't see a range of PlayStation um, packaging. Mm -hmm. So like maybe you start out $4.99 for a box and a controller and then up to $5.99 for like terabytes of storage mm -hmm. or I mean not even because like we know gaming consoles love to pretend like storage is this incredibly impossible expensive precious commodity 256 gigabytes who could think at that speed I know so um, much money but I wouldn't be surprised to climb up to say like maybe early into the PlayStation 5 run like a PlayStation 5 Pro upgraded box with some type of yeah. PSVR solution, mm -hmm. all together, like the whole living room kit at $9.99. Yeah, Newegg Dennis brings up in Twitch that uh, Spider-Man 8K, God of War 8K, all upscaled <laughs> from 1080p. <laughs> womp womp. Sad yep. trombone. So I, I, I kind of feel like you, you started out at something $4.99 for a very streamlined box, and then you kind of build it up from there. And I we were talking about this uh, off camera like mm -hmm. this could represent the last generation of trying to make the most beastly powerful box what lives under your TV. Well, because if it all goes the way of game streaming services, then hardware won't matter anymore, which again, like I said, kind of makes me sad. It makes me <laughs> anxious, very anxious. We'll but, see. But if Xbox as a service pulls out, then I think Sony could be in trouble with a really a really expensive 
powerful. Uh, I'm laughing and I am box in Twitch chat it says, I am the most powerful box. Yes, you yes, are. You are I box. Am box. I am uh, box. So thanks so much to everyone for voting and commenting and joining the conversation. Remember to subscribe to Newegg on YouTube so that you can get notified about these polls when we put them up so that you can also be part of the conversation. We like chatting with you. Yeah. You seem neat. Um, <laughs> we've been talking about the future of the PlayStation, <laughs> uh, but what about its golden age? Yeah, the classic era of the PlayStation console, if you will. Uh, and we can take a, a very brief look back. Yes, I think that with that very smooth and subtle transition, you're saying that you want to talk about the PlayStation Classic. Uh, you can check it out right now on Newegg.com slash Newegg now. It's on that page. So for a price that we can't even say out loud. What? We're trying to get you to go there, can you tell? Uh, but that you can see when you add the product to your cart. So it's a good price, though. <laughs> <laughs> you should check it out. I mean, I actually did look it up. I know what it is. I can't tell you, and no I'm spoilers, sorry. Spoilers, Juan. This is the all-in-one throwback mini console. I, these these things are really fun. You know, I've got yeah. a couple of these these now. It's 45. I'm sorry. This is in the script. 45 percent smaller than the original PlayStation. I like the radio voice for if it. You Keep were worried about yeah. the amount of space, the volume <laughs> it was taking up. Uh, it comes with 20 preloaded games, including Final Fantasy VII, uh, Jumping Flash, Tekken 3, and Wild Arms. Ooh. So, uh, if if you were in the market for yeah, if uh, you're a fan of the original yes. PlayStation console, or if you happen to miss out on the the classic games, maybe when they were originally released like me, uh, the PS Classic is a convenient and surprisingly low-priced way to kind of revisit this whole era we, of gaming history. We both skipped over that. Yeah, I was, I, I, did you do that as well? I did not jump on OG PlayStation because okay. I was hardcore, nerdcore Nintendo fanboy. Okay. My money will not be spent on Sega or this Sony abomination. Wow. Absolutely not N64 for life. Oh my goodness. Well, the N64 was lovely, but yeah, I was firmly but in my you were already converted to PC, PC gaming, gaming yeah. full time at so, that point. So, so I did not have an original PlayStation. I feel like I've gotten older and I've grown and that that hot blood <laughs> has, has dulled a little hey, and I could go back and revisit some classic. You can be classic, platform agnostic. It's fine. Classic PlayStation. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> staying on the topic of gaming, uh, Trisha, yes. this week you were a part of a big esports conference here in Southern California. Yeah. And, and I, I figured you would want to share some of your thoughts uh, on, uh, on what you got to, to check out with our audience. Sure. So, earlier this week, I went to the Invin Global Esports Conference, IGEC, uh, which I was joking around on my Twitter, has been referred to as the Coachella of esports, which I just thought was the funniest thing ever. And then I was talking to other people good. that were going about, like, we're going to make a, a flower wreath made out of controllers. And <laughs> it, it got ridiculous. Um, but no, it was a really, really fun event. And I went because I was moderating two different panels, the intersection of uh, streetwear and esports panel, as well as the how to have a career in esports when you're bad at video games panel, which I thought was the funniest panel title ever. Um, but also I went as a more of a fan of esports than someone that's ever been involved with the production of it. I am by no means a shoutcaster. I'm not a broadcaster for events. I haven't been, not that I wouldn't be open to it, but I have not been to date. So getting a peek at the behind the scenes of this world was fun. I got to have conversations with player managers who live in the houses and the team houses and what yeah. that's like and talk to some people who um, – our player managers that you know moved over from traditional sports and how that differs. I got to speak with people that are esports medicine professionals and what that entails. So it was a really, really cool event. There's so many different moving parts and everything about this entire industry is still coming up. It's still kind of the wild, wild west. There's no training for these specific jobs. People are paving their own way because they want to work in competitive gaming. Right. And so, yeah, it was it was really neat to see and just kind of talk to agents and social media uh, brand managers and just the entire world from start to finish. It was really cool. I, I think, like, that explosion, because we keep trying to use metaphors to, like, apply some of the same business models. Well, this works with... Mm -hmm. Again, we, we had, like, I, I don't know what to say, like, traditional sports versus esports or physical sports yeah. versus esports. But was there was there some conversation on the ground about some of these trends that we've seen on things like players approaching burnout? Cuz you know like it's it's very clear when a player on a field in a traditional physical sport is injured and you go okay, we've got to stop running that person cuz his limbs are falling apart. 
has there been some examination that you were able to see from some of those discussions that like you've got people operating at like the highest mental oh, yeah. levels how do you keep them from imploding like how do you keep that brain cramp from disrupting yeah burnout is super real so yeah. um the person who i was talking to I actually sat with them at the dinner they had afterwards that was an, an esports esports medicine professional mm -hmm. so he said you know not only is that carpal tunnel and dealing with neck and upper and lower back issues and eye strain and the physical aspects of it but it's also really dealing very hardcore with the mental aspects of it he said burnout is super real yeah um you've got people that are just under strain 24 seven and also just like traditional sports, a lot of the people coming into say collegiate esports, they're kids yeah. and they're kids that maybe have just come into a lot of fame or a lot of money and now they're superstars and what does that do to your psyche at right. that age? And, uh, and the scrutiny you're under from, yes. from an audience base that can interact with you in real time. Right, yeah, so, and a lot of people assuming that if you are a professional gamer, because gaming is in the electronic and digital world anyway, that you're automatically going to be great at having a social media presence, <laughs> um, which is entirely not true. So yeah. a lot of that kind of stuff and just some really fascinating conversations. Well, I, I, I'm glad you're able to check it out. That, that kind of stuff I think is fascinating as this all has been evolving. Because mm -hmm. like, there's no, there's no like no model for it. There's no like path. Right. It's it's yeah. all completely new. So, um, all right, let's switch gears. Uh, we should to your expertise. Yes, I like uh, like I said, I, I was on a jet plane for 13 hours there and back. Time to talk about Computex because last week I was there with the Newegg Studios team. It was us and some Newegg ninjas running around Taipei, checking out the latest and greatest from the P, uh, from the PC hardware world, eating ridiculous foods at night markets. <laughs> Um, it was maybe one of the more adventurous uh, culinary experiences of where my life. Where is the culinary vlog? Is that on your channel? Yeah, I do have a couple okay, like where we went to the night market. <laughs> I was not brave enough to try the squid. I <laughs> couldn't bring myself to do that. Okay, but we need to start off with the bell of the ball. What so many uh, com companies, manufacturers were talking about, AMD oh my gosh. made a huge splash at the show this year. Yeah, I hope everyone bought their AMD stock early. Ooh, there were some people in the live chat talking about that. Yep. Like, apparently, <laughs> it's performing very well. Oh, yeah. Um, so first up, and we can get this out of the way first, AMD's 5700X Navi GPUs, not a lot is known about those cards yet. In fact, Probably AMD... 83. Yeah, oh, definitely at E3. I think we're going to be getting more word on that at E3. But actually, AMD kind of took a number of their manufacturing partners by surprise just mentioning it. Okay. Um, it was hilarious. Like, one of our <laughs> first appointments was at ASRock, and they had these concept cards on display, and they were like, yeah, we didn't know AMD was going to mention Navi in their in their press announcement it was it was pretty cute but you could go and see like this is what we think cool. our navi cards are gonna look like cool. um it was pretty cool but again they were like we, we we didn't know uh but we do know that they're gonna be based on a seven nanometer fabrication process same as the ryzen 3000 chips we know they're built on a new art architecture called rdna mm -hmm. which uh is also being mentioned part of a PS5 launch. Mm -hmm. And we know that they're gonna be on PCIe 4 with GD, GDDR6 memory. That sounds like those are going to be impressive, powerful specs. Yes. But as far as we know for performance, pricing, what models they might be, we're, we're gonna have to wait for more info at E3. Yes. So, uh, biggest news from AMD, obviously Ryzen 3000, third generation Ryzen, CPUs based on the seven nanometer Zen 2 microarchitecture. Crazy. Slated to offer huge power increases yes. to those import, uh, improvements, uh, core, die, the density, slew of other engineering advancements. And so far we know the lineup will have five entries in the series across a broad spectrum of power levels and price points. So I was fortunate enough to talk uh, to an expert on the topic of these new CPUs. We sat down with AMD's Robert Halleck at Computex. So we actually have some of that video, some of that interview, which we can check out right now.
Hey, New Egg viewers, uh, Juan Carlos Bagnell here with Robert hey, Pollock. That's right. Is that nailed it? Right? it. Okay. Yep, nailed it. Um, and uh, we're going to talk some AMD, if you hadn't noticed, as we've got AMD signage and stuff behind us. Mm -hmm. So I I hear you you guys had some products to talk about, <laughs> yes. making a little noise. We did a thing. Uh, we've got the brand new AMD third gen Ryzen processor. The big storyline is that gamers want single threaded performance, yes. they want multi threaded performance, and they want power efficiency and third gen Ryzen is the industry leader in all three of those. So if you're an enthusiast or a gamer, you know, you don't have to compromise by getting third gen Ryzen. Now, we, we took a couple meetings earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. We're kind of walking around the show floor. Hardware partners are very excited about this part. As they and, should be. And <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, like, to let you know, no. you, you can okay. talk to some of your manufacturing yeah, yeah, yeah. partners and they're saying nice things about you. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of those considerations coming into uh, Ryzen 2? True. I'm on a I'm on a Threadripper. I mean, awesome. Thanks. <laughs> we're, we're talking about trying to blur some of those high performance lines, mm. which I think have been segmented in the past. Sure. You know, gamers versus content creators yeah. and finding parts that can kind of satisfy a broader Both. swath. Um, coming into Ryzen 3, what, what were some of those goals? Because it seems like hmm. we've, we've reached a, a pretty, pretty solid platform for competition. Uh, well, let's see. For us, it's the Continuing to push that single-threaded performance is an obsession for us. Uh, as Lisa, Dr. Lisa Su, our CEO, said the other day, mm -hmm. that lifts all boats, and it doesn't matter what kind of workload you do. If you have higher IPC, it gets faster. Right. So our first generation Zen was 52% higher, and then the middle one was about three to five percent, and then this one is another 15% on top of that. So compounding just this massive single-thread performance increase. Uh, and so that makes every core faster right. and then increasing what we call compute density or how much total performance is packed into the same processor. Our new seven nanometer partnership with TSMC really allows us to pack in more cores in the same amount of space. So whereas we were previously able to fit a maximum of eight in the platform, mm -hmm. now we can go up to 12. Right. So it's a 50% jump just from uh, shrinking the size of every transistor. So those are two of the big things, but there are many that we were really focused on. Now that that uh, fabrication, that, mm. that die shrink, I mean, obviously we've been talking about R&D years sure. in the making, sure. getting to this point now, but it's proven to be somewhat challenging for some of your competitors out there. Yes. Um, getting to that and then also knowing uh, that the chip yield is looking really solid on, on this generation right out of the gate. Sure. We've got better single core performance. We've got mm -hmm. better multi-core performance, but we are still in that arms race of trying to keep thermals in check when you're running parts that aggressively. Absolutely. I mean, creating a high performance processor always carries thermal implications, but seven nanometer runs at a lab at lower average voltage, mm -hmm. which will help. Uh, and then just it's a much more efficient process overall such that whereas an eight core processor last generation might have been 95 to 105 watts TDP, this year we can do m much more performance at 65 watts nice. TDP, right? So the, the cooler required on top of that chip is about 40% lower year over year. Or, or you keep the same TDP and you do a 50% increase in core counts, <laughs> right? Right. So that's that's a pretty nice story. And that, that more than anything is the real big takeaway of, of seven nanometer. Now, has there been conversation, and again, because I know you have to be working really closely with all of the manufacturers sure. that are supporting the actual chip, but ha have you seen any uptick in, we've been really excited by some of the creative ITX solutions yes. that are coming out for Ryzen yes. 3. Has, what what has that conversation looked like with some of your partners? Well, uh, you know, getting motherboards into the market is, is a little bit political, to be honest, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, you want your partners to believe in you and that, that they trust you to be around for a while in the market. And first gen Ryzen had about 15 launch motherboards. Second gen was 20 to 25, mm -hmm. and now we're at 56 at just at launch. at launch. And then a company like Asus has already announced 30 motherboards total, which yeah. is larger than our entire launch assortment for second gen. So that sort of reflects how much they believe in the platform and how much they're willing to bet on the platform. And it's very, very strong endorsement from them. And I hope that signals to the rest of the public like what we're trying to accomplish with this. Now, do you think the, when we're talking about Ryzen 3, that this is gonna start moving more into the living room? We've been hearing about this for generations now. Uh, sure. We're gonna have computers in the living room and we're gonna have sure, sure, sure. and stuff like that. We're, I think we're starting to see some of that traction actually 
getting a toehold, getting some consumer mind share on, you can have this tiny little box and it's a full computer. Sure, sure. I, I, I mean, I'm probably the perfect use case for this. At home, I run a Ryzen 5 2400G mm-hmm. in an ITX form factor. Uh, and that is enough to play most of the games that I would want to play on, on a big screen TV from my Steam library. And you know, it's, it's a tiny little computer the size of a lunchbox, but it has full desktop performance, right? right? And third gen Ryzen, I can't say too much, but we're making some interesting options available for customers who want high core counts nice. in smaller form factors. And it's not just, it's not just the motherboard. Uh, so we'll get there around the E3 time frame. We can explain more of what we mean. But we hear the people who want uh, a lot of performance in a small form factor. And there are things that we can do as a company to help enable that. Nice. So one of the things, because I, I come from more of a media production. Okay. You know, like when I build a box, like that's the main sure. focus. So. And I like to play some games sure. on it too. Um, has that been one of the driving design influences on this generation of chipset absolutely or, uh, well it, it's it's i'm always looking for ways to kind of break down you know uh, sure I sure, be able sure. To justify a work purchase i and completely it. understand <laughs> uh i think the reality is that gamers are increasingly getting into content creation mm-hmm. um simply as a result of what's popular in the gaming market you look right. at the the rise of twitch and suddenly many many more people are doing video encoding than ever Right? Live. Live. Yeah. Live video encoding. And it's not somebody sitting in front of Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas anymore. It's some guy who just hits stream and he's not even thinking about what's actually happening. Right. And that takes a lot of compute performance. And it's also true that the processor is the best way to encode video. It has the highest quality for the bit rate available. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, about 5,000 kilobits is all you get. Right. right. So you want the most quality out of that budget that you have. So thinking about those use cases and the idea that people might do content creation professionally, such as yourself, and then go play a game at home. That is absolutely one of the driving factors by us continuing to increase core counts in addition to single threaded performance. And leaning into more of the professional space, Mm -hmm. Epic was making a little noise too. I, we had a conversation off camera where we were talking about um, moving things server side, absolutely. So not just not just game streaming, but some professional applications as well. Sure. I, a, a little on AMD's strategy for for those platforms. It's a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. I normally deal with desktop stuff, but uh, certainly you'll hear in comments from my colleagues who work on uh, Radeon Instinct for servers mm-hmm. or Epic from server that there is. Uh, starting to be enough compute performance available in the cloud or even sort of consider the classic mainframe view of, you know, you have a bunch of employees in the company, they have very thin clients and they're all farmed out to virtual machines on the server. That is making a resurgence in in business Uh, because the latency of, of local networks is getting so good, you know, 10 gigabit ethernet and sub one millisecond timings and Wi-Fi six. And it's just, it's just a lot easier to connect people to a mainframe and give them a full PC's worth of hardware. And if you look like a, uh, at a product like Epic with as many cores as it has, suddenly it's very easy to give, you know, essentially a quad core to every VM that happens to be connected to that server. Now, because I have a little skin in the game, is this yeah. like a potential roadmap that I could kind of envision where my Threadripper <laughs> what else might be going? So I think people, <laughs> I think people have looked at third gen Ryzen and mm-hmm. said, okay, well, you just went to 12 cores in your mainstream socket, and Threadripper, 12 cores and 16 cores today. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, what I can say is that I've seen the news saying, you know, Threadripper's canceled. I want to say Threadripper is absolutely not canceled. There will be a third gen Threadripper. (laughs) The other thing that I want to say is that as socket AM4 moves up in performance, Mm -hmm. Threadripper, of course, has to move up, up. Right. So I think if that's your aspiration, then you're going to be happy. Yeah, you have something to look forward to. Yeah. (laughs) It's like I've built this whole case around it. I like to just keep keep on that train. Totally understand it. You will be able to stay on that train. I've been left behind on previous chipsets. Well, I I think you've seen from us that we don't like to leave people behind on previous chipsets. If you look at socket AM4, that was a, a socket that started with four cores and four threads on 28 nanometer, one, one die on the chip. And now it's 12 cores, 24 threads, three dies on the chip. It has PCI Gen 4. We're pushing 50% more memory bandwidth through the processor. And that's all on the same socket. So that socket has grown from 
across four generations yeah. of, of CPU, and and absolutely nobody in this industry has ever attempted anything like that. Uh, there have been some sockets that hosted one or two CPUs generationally, but never four. I've always been that guy who like, I'll hold off on an upgrade, I'll hold off on an upgrade, yeah, yeah. and then it becomes like, no, nah, I need to... Five years later, day. I'm still yeah. waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. I just got to rip everything out and yeah, start yeah. fresh. So we were, we were taking a meeting this morning uh, with a company uh, talking about their graphics solutions, okay. and uh, it was kind of adorable because they had concepts of what yes, some okay. of their future video cards might look yeah, like. Yeah, okay. They seemed to have been a little surprised that the word Navi was mentioned mm. during AMD's keynote. I was, I was wondering if there was anything that we could talk about as it pertains to AMD graphics. I'm not a graphics expert at AMD. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm strictly a CPU guy. But what I will say is if the Computex keynote was 80% third gen Ryzen, 20% mm -hmm. Navi, you can look forward to E3, which will be 80% Navi, 20% third gen Ryzen, right? So if you're just a graphics guy and you want to know more about what's coming for Radeon, E3 is the show to watch. Okay, so just to wrap this up, because thank you for taking the time yeah, to, of course. to sit with us here. Just you personally, because we were having this conversation offline. I Some of the partner boards that are coming out, some mm -hmm. of the new feature sets that yes. are coming out, building, uh, this seems like it's the right time for great competition mm -hmm. in the PC builder space, in the pre-built PC market, yeah. uh, computers that span multi-use case scenarios. Just what are you looking forward to? You're going to be building your own box. What, uh, what are you wanting to? I am to, to absolutely going to be build, building my own box. Uh, I already have a Ryzen 9 3900X <laughs> lined up. Uh, I have a source inside the company who can get me one. I was going to say, if anyone had yeah. some, some insider, yeah. Uh, one of the perks of working at a microprocessor <laughs> company, you get motherboards and CPUs for free. Um, <laughs> So I'm absolutely going to build a 12 core system. I want the most performance. I am primarily a gamer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I run a 34 inch, 3440, 1440, 120 hertz panel at home. I want the most performance I can possibly get in my PC. And I am 100% confident that Ryzen 9 3900X for me is going to be the answer. Okay. This is, this is, this is the delicate question. Then. Okay. You build that box. I do. What's the first game you play on it? Uh, right now, it would probably be Rocket League. I have okay. 1,300 hours in Rocket League, right. so that's a uh, you know I could have been learning Mandarin or <laughs> or like I don't know, gotten a master's degree or something. But instead, I just played Rocket League. Um, that so yeah, I'm probably going to spend a lot of money on a system to play Rocket League and play it even better. <laughs> yeah, uh, what is it you do? You play Minecraft. Uh, so looking just this idea of what, what enthusiasts are looking for, they want the most IO on their platform, they want the most single thread performance, they want the most multi-thread performance, they want the highest power efficiency, and they want the best price. Those are the five things that you as a microprocessor company can deliver on, and third gen Ryzen and X570 wins every single one of those categories. And so I take the view that I don't really care what kind of enthusiast you are, we have the answer for you this year right. in 2019. Now, outside of the enthusiast space, though, sure. uh, I think one of the things that's been sort of exciting from a democratizing standpoint, mm. though, is watching a, a... So we've got like a feature and performance war happening at the Absolutely, high end. we do. And the high end isn't nearly as expensive to start building around as, as it, it used, used to, to be. be. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, competition is good. Um, but also that exciting entry level sure. market where entry level PCs. We we did it. We recently did a build on Newegg now. Okay. Where I think we we ended up with somewhere like around a four or five hundred dollar. Yeah, that's just, what I would expect. Just slightly above like mm -hmm. a console pricing. Absolutely. But ended up with performance that it actually plays. Yeah. Really, really solid. Yeah. So uh, as to AMD strategy right mm -hmm. there, because it's not like you've walked away from. It, it's not like you focus just on enthusiasts to a mm -hmm. point where, oh well, maybe some of these lower end parts, mm. ah, they're actually generating just as much excitement sure. in the community, in the in the PC building community as your high end parts are. I think um, one of the mistakes that many often make is when they say enthusiast, they attach that to someone that are has a, to a price, to a right, price right. or to a certain amount of affluence in the customer. And for me, that's not the right decision. Like you can be a PC enthusiast regardless of what your budget is. And I don't mm -hmm. care if it's a $400 computer or a $4,000 computer. To me, you are an enthusiast. And I want you to have the best possible performance that I can help provide. And so if that's a $99 processor, I'm going to make the best damn $99 <laughs> processor I can make, right? And, and, and so there are people buying at all budgets. And anytime you lose sight of that, 
you're in for trouble. Well, Robert, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank I you. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. All right, good. folks. I, this is uh, Robert with AMD. Obviously, AMD and third generation Ryzen has been making a ton of noise Absolutely. all over Computex and just the press in general. We're going to have a lot more information coming up on products that are going to support these chips coming up soon on this uh, this YouTube channel. So make sure you're subscribed for New Egg Studios. I'm one Carlos Bagnell. Thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing. And I'll catch you all on the next video. Adios. Yeah, that was a great conversation. And especially wrapping it up, because I was trying to find like a few little things like I could maybe put them on the spot, ask about Navi, ask about thread rippers. Yeah, and, like, get a little new a egg little, now come exclusive. On, come on, come on, just any information we could extract out of them, but especially talking about some of like the lower end parts, you know, like, oh, we talk about things for gamers and to have them come back and say like, yeah, we understand like if something is a an enthusiast build, it doesn't mean it's a $10,000 rig. Yeah. So we're going to make the best part we can. If we're going to make a $99 part, we're going to make the best $99 part we can. That's right? great. He was so on point. One of the things that we, because um, we were, I was, I was doing the show mostly with uh, Newegg, Ninja, Leo, mm -hmm. and Brian, and Keija. AMD had this amazing presence on the show floor. Yeah. Without actually being on the show floor. It's, it's one of those amazing times in technology where you know this product speaks for itself it really did Ryzen third generation spoke for itself oh yeah I mean I can tell as someone who was not at Computex that's what everyone was talking about yeah. I mean the fact that they're in the seven nanometer play right now oh, is huge and small <laughs> and huge and small at the same time uh, <laughs> see what you did there <laughs> um but seriously like Intel oh you better step it Oh. Well, and this is what's exciting <laughs> about competition. So yeah. if you've ever followed any of our commentary, I mean, right. on Newegg or on our personal channels, we believe in cycles and building an audience, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is Ryzen third generation. AMD has shown they can take a part, it's now competitive, Ryzen first right. gen. They iterated and they improved it, Ryzen second generation. And now with Ryzen third generation, so many partners were getting on board. Each manufacturing partner that's making motherboards is making more motherboards individually than all of the Ryzen motherboards for the first generation launch. Totally, and I mean, and you can it's tell insane. how much confidence other manufacturers have in something, and they have had hands on with it, so yeah. we're led to believe. So if they're making those mass quantities of motherboards, then we have to believe that the hype is, is justified. Yeah, that yeah. we're in, in line, and that AMD is on the pulse for a new tech too. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, hey, we made a great chip and we're gonna fight you know, Intel mm -hmm. as the, the competitor in this space. They are launching off PCIe 4. Yeah. That's, again, crazy. some very exciting moves in the tech space. And so we should probably move on and talk about some of those partners moves. Yeah, what uh, else did you see? Uh, Gigabyte, I okay. think, had one of the most impressive uh, gaming-focused launches for their Aorus products. Um, that's a huge partner. Talking X570 motherboards, we were front and center for Computex, and they also had, uh, again, talking PCIe 4, they had some new SSDs to talk about, which was really exciting. So mm -hmm. we can check out what they had at Aorus. I mean, I think we've got a little video that we can roll on that too. Hey, Newegg viewers, Juan Carlos Bagnell here. We just wrapped up the Aorus presentation talking about all of the new tech that they're showing off at Computex, tactical gaming monitors, really exciting stuff for displays, focusing displays on different types of games. If you're into MOBAs and immersive gaming versus twitchy first-person shooters, they've got solutions for you. But of course, Everyone's going nuts with X570, and Aorus is no exception. Gigabyte showing off a range of high-end motherboards, gaming-centric, focused on, and not just for gaming, but blurring that line between gaming and content creation, because a lot of us are streaming. Your, your machine has to fulfill multiple roles, and that's all about what Aorus is trying to achieve this generation, especially with their partnership with AMD. So when we're taking a look at those new X570 motherboards, they're bringing a bunch of their higher-end tech, 
from their premier extreme lines of years past into their more mainstream product lineup. So we're talking better thermals, we're talking better power management, and Oris with their extreme line of motherboards is gonna be the only manufacturer to offer a passively cooled X570 motherboard, which is crazy exciting considering some of the power draw that this monster chipset is gonna be drawing. So their total thermal solution, their total power consumption solution, top of the line, exciting stuff, especially if you're gonna be building a high-end rig. Now, a high-end rig, we also need to make sure that we've got high-end storage, and Oris has got us covered there too, offering up an eight terabyte PCIe 4 solid state drive. They they opened this thing up and not only with this blower kit and these copper fins, we had four SSDs, Fison controllers, all working together to give you insane throughput. Just, just incredible read and write speed. I'm putting graphics up on the screen because I'm just blown away by what they were showing, showing off there. But then if you just want to go with the normal M.2 solution, they've got a cooled solution for an Aorus motherboard at two terabytes, which is again, putting out performance on PCIe 4, which is significantly faster than anything that we've had in generations past. So the entire platform, that's what's going to be exciting about X570. That's what Aorus was really here to talk about today, was making a platform and an infrastructure around getting and extracting every ounce of performance out of every stage of your rig. So, lots of news coming up from Computex 2019, lots of things to be excited about, lots of products to show showcase, so make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you're following us on all the socials, because we're going to have a lot more to talk about for New X Studios. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. Thanks so much for watching, for sharing, for subscribing, and I'll catch you all on the next video. So thank you, Juan, for that amazing coverage from Computex. It was I think, a lot of fun. Right? Yeah. And and you got to see some really cool stuff that's coming up later this year from both Gigabyte and Aorus. And that gives us a good chance to talk about some of the products that you can buy right this minute on Newegg.com slash Newegg now. Uh, like this laptop. This is the Gigabyte Aero 15Y9, a Newegg exclusive model with an Intel Core mm. i9-8950HK and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Max-Q card, along with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, I, I'm actually, I've been using <laughs> this, uh, this beast of a machine to join you in the live chat as we're doing the mm -hmm. show right now. Yeah. It's grossly OP for <laughs> how I've been using it the last day. Um, but you, you, can, uh, you can check it out on uh, Newegg. Super, super thin bezel. A shockingly thin frame for what's packed inside. It's super sleek. A 2080 is in this thing. That is absolutely nuts. Uh, yeah, it's a serious powerhouse. Yeah, this thing is crazy. Um, so ready for content creation, ready for gaming. It has 144 hertz refresh rate screen, so the display can absolutely keep up with your gaming <laughs> yep. needs. Um, even better, right now this laptop comes with a free gaming mouse and a copy of the upcoming Wolfenstein Youngblood. Nice. And while we're talking about Oris, let's also talk about the motherboard we have sitting right. just off screen. Let's, let's bring it on let's up. Let's break this out. I know, right? I think I'm going to sit forward. laptop for a second as well. Oh, this is heavy. We can get the, I'm going to give you the heavy. Okay. I, I got the really light, thin um, laptop. I'm going to give you the heavy, okay. water blocked thing. Dun, 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 dun. So, this is the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force 5G. Let's see if the boxes can make funny noises as we open them. Oh, good, they behave themselves. They, they did. They, they made some uh, some impolite sounds while we were breaking them all. Uh, okay, so you've got the motherboard there. Yes. Um, it's a Z390 Intel motherboard and an Intel Core i9 9900K CPU comes pre-installed in the socket. That's what's in the box right. right there. So this is an overclocking focused motherboard with extreme cooling in mind with, let me... Uh, let me show off this puppy with an all-in-one. I'm not going to, what if I, my nightmare is that I would tilt it too far forward. It's just going <laughs> to no. fall out. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and get this <laughs> You're going to try to drop yeah. it? Cool, cool. Um, but it comes with an all-in-one mono <laughs> block that covers it. both CPU and PCH <laughs> area and high-density copper fins for extreme heat dissipation. 
beautiful stuff. Super pretty. Yeah. So I, it's it's uh, two boxes. The slimmer one has the mono block. You can mount to the motherboard that you get right here. Mm -hmm. Board comes with a ton. I mean, it's Oris. So they've been having a lot of mic drop moments with the way that they've been putting these products together recently. Uh, you get a bunch of cool stuff yeah. uh, with this one. Braided, uh, six braided sleeve SATA cables, Oris RGB fan commander controller hub for your RGBs, a GCOC touch module, and that's proprietary to gigabyte overclocking, SLI bridge, two Wi-Fi antennas. And again, I don't know, did we, did we mention that it's a 9900K that they just punched in there yeah. for you. Yeah. You don't have to be like, it's just there. You know, no big deal. MBD. Uh, right? Uh, so the, there you go. the board also features 16 phase VRM, <laughs> reinforced PCIe slots, and power connectors, and a 24 pin ATX okay. connector at a 90 degree angle. Okay, and you cap it all off with integrated Thunderbolt 3 ports on the rear. Um, uh, and it, all together, you've got one of the most impressive motherboards on the market today, mm -hmm. complete with one of Intel's highest performance CPUs. Mm -hmm. And you can get a free Intel 660p 1 terabyte M.2 SSD with your purchase. Yup. What? Let me just say that again. You can get a free one terabyte SSD with your purchase for a limited time only. Check it out now on newegg.com slash newegg now if you are looking to start a build. And, and especially when what we, we, were, gotcha. we were talking about high performance parts yeah. or as the 16 phase and, uh, you know, some, a lot of excitement, just Oris in general. Speaking of a lot of excitement, uh, Juan, do you have anything else from uh, Computex that you wanted to show us? Yeah, we, we did. I mean, we, um, we dropped by G-Skill. I don't know um, if, if you've <laughs> ever uh, talked about RAM. They're I, one of the top names. I definitely saw people in chat in calling out that we have this. <laughs> just making fun of us. Casually sitting here. <laughs> just our, 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 you know, our showpiece, our coffee table <laughs> talking. We need a coffee table it's book so about ridiculous. RAM. So they had a lot of fun at Computex <laughs> this year. Just some crazy. Uh, so, of, of course, they were hosting... Um, they were trying, focusing on world record overclocking competition, uh -huh. so we were hands-on for that at their booth this year. Uh, G-Skill was showing off some really cool and creative X570 builds, and we've got another video, another short video that we can show we can roll on right now, so let's go ahead and check that out. Hey, New Egg viewers, Juan Carlos Bagnell here. We're at Computex 2019 at the G-Skill booth. Kicking things off, just a fun little accessory uh, for G-Skill to show off. A really handy little keyboard. $50 for Cherry MX Red switches and double shot keycaps. That's a killer deal. That's a steal of a deal for a solid, straightforward keyboard under your fingertips. And while we're going off of some of their custom builds, they're showing off some really fun PCs here on the show floor. They maybe have my favorite custom build of the show. They're totally cheating by building a PC into a Heineken keg. I probably have not sampled the beer from this PC case because it's only 10 in the morning. So moving right along. This is G-Skill though, so we really want to talk about RAM. This is, uh, this is their bread and butter. This is what they're really proud to show off. And again, this is another generation of 5,000 megahertz parts coming from G-Skill for you Intel builders out there. 5,000 megahertz at CL17, 5,200 megahertz at CL18, some killer options there, but fret not AMD builders, because we also have their second generation offerings for 4,000 megahertz. Those of you looking at a Ryzen third gen build, you're gonna have plenty of options to make sure you're properly fueling all of those high performance parts. And Computex is always a fun place to show off concept gear, get a sneak peek of what's coming down the pipe, and G-Skill's no exception, showing off their Trident Z Neo concepts, uh, what their future designs might look like, and I think these are pretty solid RAM heat spreaders. A very modern look, kind of a Mondrian aesthetic for your RAM. Uh, drop us a comment down below, is this the type of design accent you'd want to feature in your next build? Higher performance is the name of the game at Computex. Always the name of the game at Computex, from your chip to your motherboard to your storage, and of course, your RAM. So uh, that's gonna do it for us here at the G-Skill booth, Computex 2019. Thanks so much for watching, for subscribing to this channel, sharing these videos. Make sure you're subscribed because we've got more coming from Computex here in Taipei. And uh, for New X Studios, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. I will catch you all on the next video.
always fun in the live chat to talk <laughs> some smack about a certain manufacturer who no one in shall particular. currently remain you know. um, nameless. <laughs> So that, that was awesome stuff. And for those of you who are asking in the live chat, I absolutely did demo the Heineken custom PC build a couple times. Okay. My visits on the show floor for Computex this year. Nice. Um, that, was, that was a tasty uh, way to win one of my favorite builds, custom builds of the show floor. Yeah. A and so uh, you saw some of G-Skill's flashy RAM on display at the show in a few of those builds. <laughs> and we have the most distinctive sticks the money can buy right here. This is G-Skills Triton Z Royal Series, and it's perfect for when RGB just isn't enough and you need the sparkles too. It's, it's sometimes, so fancy when you need, you need your need, RAM to be fancy. When you need it to be fancy. Sometimes you need the sparkles and the gold and the, the, the plating. Yeah, well, you can get it in gold or silver, silver right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As shiny as possible. When um, you were on, uh, what was the, the Max builds? Was it? Uh, power builds. Power builds. Yeah, so, on the Mixer show, power builds. Did you watch when they used it? Yeah. <laughs> you, they, they put on gloves so that they wouldn't get fingerprints and smudges oh, well, yes, on your royal it's, RAM. Yeah, it's. It's very royal. Well done, power builds. Very so, funny. Uh, because it's from G-Skill, you know it also has their reputation for quality RAM behind it. Uh, you can check these out for yourself on newegg.com slash newegg now. Um, I will be very curious to see, though, what they, because in the video we talk about like some of their custom, they, they also had um, concepts mm -hmm. for what some of their new heat spreaders looked like. And they had this one that was super modern for uh, Trident Z Neo. Uh, I very much liked the look of that. Okay. So, so like hard cut panel, blue squares and red squares, and like, oh, that could look really good in a build too. Of course, I the, trust you. The royal above and beyond. So, <laughs> AMD Gigabyte G Skill. Just a very small taste of what we saw at Computex 2019. After today's episode, make sure you visit our YouTube channel for even more coverage of all of the newest products that debuted at Computex. Okay. We have stuff from Corsair. Corsair made a huge move for custom PC building, Hydro X, mm -hmm. uh, putting together your own uh, custom water cooling solutions. That, that could have some serious ramifications yeah. for custom building. For the liquid cooling world. Uh, um, we talked to ASRock, and we got to check out some of their, uh, some of their new boards. They had an X570 Aqua water-blocked motherboard. Love it. They're only going to make 1,000 of them. And I got to hold 0002, so the <gasps> second one. And I'm like, I, I was terrified. I was like, I'm going to drop this thing. I'm going to pull a Linus. I'm so afraid. Um, but I did not. I managed to defy gravity. Uh, yeah. So that was very exciting. Good. Uh, we hit up MSI. We got to see their new Titan. Again, an insane laptop. Um, Asus had some killer stuff. Zotac um, up, upgrading. One of the few companies uh, showing off some VR gear. Cool. Zotac. I know Baxorn in chat was asking oh. about VR gear. So, I mean, they were showing off their backpack. And again, like, you know, making VR mobile while we're mm -hmm. waiting for other companies. You've, you've been playing with some Oculus gear. Uh, Be Quiet had a new entry-level case and some new power supplies. I and mean, we had so much to check out on the show floor. So we've got an entire video playlist that you can check out all of the coverage that we had from yeah. Taipei. You guys covered a lot of ground. We were running, man. It was fun. <laughs> Big, exciting stuff. I, I, I hope you check it out. And then, I mean, if you want, you can also see some of the BTS where I was shooting some personal vlogs vlogs, trying out food and doing wacky shenanigan-y things throughout Taiwan. So it was, it was good times. It was I'm a good show. I'm amazed after a full day of making videos, you went out and made more videos. <laughs> it's like it's, to you. It's what we do. Yes. It's, you gotta uh, vlog but it. But speaking of big, exciting shows yes. that you don't want to miss, E3 is next week. Right around the corner. So from one of hardware's biggest events, we're rolling right into the biggest week of the year for gaming news. And we've talked recently about whether this might be a quieter E3 with the absence of a normal big mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like Sony or EA being yeah. removed again. But just in the past couple of weeks, we've gotten a lot of teases around the show that kind of make it seem like there is going to be yes. a lot to talk about. Plenty. I really think that, okay, opportunities. We're gonna talk about this, yes. We're going to run through our thoughts on the show. Mm -hmm. You out there watching, sound off in the chat, because we wanna know your predictions for the show and what <laughs> you're gonna be excited to talk about in the future of gaming. So, yeah. predictions. So, um, yes, E3 predictions. What will be the biggest game out of E3? What will everybody be talking about? Last year, I think most people's game of the show was Cyberpunk. Totally. Which I did not get a chance to see myself, but I do have a confirmed 
one appointment for this year. So I <laughs> personally it. am very stoked to see Cyberpunk 2077. Again, it's behind closed doors. There's I not going to be uh, video capture allowed at all. But I'm stoked to see it so I can at least tell people what I saw. Um, it should be pretty exciting. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be hands off. So we're watching someone else play through the demo. I know a lot of people are stoked about Doom Eternal. Yep. Um, we'll see what happens from Bethesda. Maybe they will also show off some of the new Elder Scrolls 6 title that they teased last year. We don't know. Um, Square Enix has been really talking, hyping up and talking that Avengers game that's, that they're working on. That's um, looking like rumor is we game. might get a real first look at it. I'm still holding out hope to see more from that Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh, yeah. It was that teased a couple fun. years ago. I would love to get some news on that. Um, anything Control. else that you can think of? Oh, control. Remedies Control, yeah, the I, new one from because you, you're a big Alan Wake fan. I, I, mean, I just, I'm saying, like this, there, I, that, that to me is going to be the one I'm, I'm going to be hunting down the most info on. Uh, Cyberpunk, I think, has mm -hmm. potential to be one of the darling shows, um, yeah. of this year too. Mm -hmm. But I really feel, and 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 someone tell me to shut up if like you don't, if you, if you're not on board this. With Sony and EA not occupying show floor space, mm -hmm. they're obviously going to be making announcements or having some conversation about what's happening in the world of their gaming ecosystems. We'll this see. could be a big opportunity for Nintendo. And Microsoft. And Microsoft, too. But Nintendo, I think in, in E3's past, often like kind of pins like, there's this one big game we want to talk about, wait in this huge long line, play some of this game, that's Nintendo. Mm -hmm. But Nintendo has been doing so well courting software developers. That's always been kind of a weakness for Nintendo. Awesome first party, yeah. but what about other games? And Switch has been blowing it up with indie right now. We know most of what they're going to be talking about is software, not yeah, hardware. Yeah, they said not hardware. So mm -hmm. I think this could be a huge opportunity for Nintendo to help fill up some of the discussion that normally would have gone to an EA or to a Sony when you're on the show floor covering that kind of conversation. And this could be a nice mm -hmm. olive branch for all of those developers that are killing it on the Switch right now, is to, to showcase a variety of different games, a variety of different yeah. work. I mean, yeah, we're excited I'm all about- I about the Nindies, I'm into that. Um, oh, but, but I mean, we're excited about Square en Enix Avengers. We also know that there's gonna be a Marvel title going to the Switch. You know, this could be the perfect place to show off exactly mm -hmm. what is current, what's hot, what's on the pulse for Nintendo this year too. Yeah, and I, I think for Microsoft in particular, we got the announcement of all those great indie studios yep. that they partnered with, which I think I already mentioned in the stream. It's it's funny for me because I'm like, did we talk about that off camera or on camera? I'll repeat <laughs> <No>. it again. <laughs> like because, or in the live chat, was that something right, I was typing sure. away while uh, we were But in. I am definitely excited to see what comes out of that. Yeah. Also, Microsoft has really been uh, teasing and doing a lot of work trying to kind of bring the gap between their console gamers and their PC gamers mm -hmm. and so the more they can do in that space that makes me very happy as well um, as someone that owns an Xbox but is primarily a <laughs> PC gamer that makes me real happy yes. and currently I don't know if you've tried any of them but currently the solutions to stream your PC games to your Xbox are less than ideal, so yep. any movement in that area would be awesome. I have other family members that are like, well, I don't want to go sit in your gaming office. Like, I don't want to go sit <laughs> in your special gaming chair at your desk and play video games. I want to sit here on the couch in the living room. And, and, and so then you point blank to them, you filthy casual. <laughs> Go play the game What Looks Good. You hear that, husbando? In, Juan's calling you out. In the good chair. <laughs> well, that's how I feel. But, <laughs> I mean, I get it. I totally get it. And, you know, Steam Machine wasn't that answer for a lot of people. It really wasn't. The wireless display app is not that answer. No. I will tell you firsthand. So It's really not. I would I would love to see some more in that. But anyway, uh, some other stuff that's hot in gaming news Big right one. now that we might see a tease maybe more I'm info at E3. Very curious. For, yeah, what about will this. come of this mysterious collaboration between George R. R. Martin um, of Game of Thrones fame, obviously, it, yeah, obviously, and from Software, the makers of the Dark Souls, Souls. games and Sekiro. And, and, and just to mm -hmm. follow up from our last live stream, kicked my butt. I, yeah. Sekiro 
I nothing ever clicked for me. Where Dark Souls was a game that I felt like I was really accomplishing something, I put it down. I haven't gone back. Yeah, I, I mean, I get it. That's that's Se Sekiro. I part I of not. the design of that game. As a, after I made that joke about yeah. filthy casuals. There, um, well, you know, it all comes. Sekiro full shut me down. There so. you go. But yeah, so what we know about this is uh, Martin has said he has quote, consulted on a game out of Japan. Mm -hmm. So we have that. According to a source that spoke to the Saikamatsu, it'll be an open world game with horse riding. We've got that. Okay. Um, it's been in production for a few years and will supposedly be unveiled as part of Microsoft's conference on June 9th. Like I said, big things coming out of Microsoft, supposedly, especially for PC gamers, is the, the word on the street. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know. So, so what do you think? I, I feel like it might be a violent game. I would say that <laughs> there's probably, yeah, there's probably a good chance really? that that'll be the case. Some, some kind of fantasy violence. Yeah, I want something set um, in, a, in a fantasy world that I want to dive into a la world building, a la Game of Thrones. Brutally difficult. Ugh, well, I feel from like software, so yes. <laughs> again, like I was just trying to say, like how obvious, like could totally. we make predictions on that? I, I just kind of feel like that's probably totally. what, um, what the situation will be. I, I, I'll be very curious to see what kind of story elements come into play from someone mm -hmm. like George R. R. Martin, but yeah. from software has, I think, a proven track record of the difficulty of the game is the draw of the game, and then tied with an unforgiving dialogue, an unforgiving narrative from someone like George R. R. Martin seems like that would be smart pairing. It'd be very cool. I'm looking forward to it. As, totally. a, as a Martin fan, I'm looking forward to it. Also, once you're done consulting on this game, please write the books. Uh, and so moving <laughs> we'll on, uh, what is Netflix up to at E3? You know, making games. So Netflix isn't game only going to E3. They're hosting a panel there called Bringing Your Favorite Shows to Life, Developing Netflix Originals into Video Games. So we know that they're probably going to talk about the upcoming Stranger Things 3, and they might touch on the game elements of the Black Mirror Bandersnatch special. Totally. Um, but what else? Um, what what else are they doing in the gaming space? Man, if, if only like Netflix could be the Netflix of gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna smack you. I'm gonna smack We're you so about many. That. Well, so because everyone, everyone that does is game streaming is like the yeah. Netflix of gaming. We're gonna make it the next um. <laughs> Um, no, I think there is a huge opportunity here to start talking about diversification, diversification of content mm -hmm. because Netflix is is surrounded. Like they're they are mm -hmm. fighting off on all fronts for every other type of everyone thinks that they can make a streaming service. That's why I made that joke because Trisha bristles whenever someone says that as like a metaphor, <laughs> we're gonna be the Netflix of this thing. Um, but we saw that works. A choose your own adventure got people hyped for, for Bandersnatch. But I think they have been leaving money on the table for some of these Netflix original properties, ways that you can do co-licensing, co-branding, yeah. you can reach out to gamers. I think this could also be them dipping their toe in the water to say, we've got this infrastructure. And we've been testing bandwidth. You go mm -hmm. to fast.com. We've been testing bandwidth. We know what the realities of this server-side infrastructure could look like. They could be a platform to also distribute at the same time. They could, yeah. I see the T-Boys in uh, Twitch chat says, Netflix has been experimenting a lot with long-form streamed games. Bandersnatch, yep. The Bear Gorilla Show, which I didn't catch, but let us yes, know what that right. was. Yes, that's right. That's the other that? one I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, they could maybe make it happen. Matt Tyler on YouTube says Netflix are the streaming gods. Um, anyone thought that they might be there teaming with companies to provide streaming games for consoles? Um, let me see if I can get that whole. Netflix are the streaming gods. Anyone thought they might be there as they're teaming with companies to provide streamed gaming for consoles? Because Thanks I, for that. I, I don't think anyone understands the realities of uh, bandwidth interconnection mm -hmm. fees, working with backhaul, and having hardware solutions that live at some of these data centers to keep content at the highest possible quality. I don't think anyone knows that as well as Netflix right now. So I, I think they, there could be something interesting for them to work on uh, in that space right now. And then um, on, I think it's on the YouTube chat, 655321, <laughs> I'm the Netflix of the comment section. Good for you. Just for you, Tricia. Thank you. So if you wanted a Netflix of commenting, that's 
Six double five three two one. There it is. Uh, so yeah, and as we mentioned before, Nintendo said they're going to focus entirely on software. That's my no big hardware announcements coming at E three from Nintendo. I really want new switches though, so I hope that's coming do you? soon. I do. Okay. Just well, more we, options. We talked about it a couple streams back. I know, you know where we're going to have like the Pro switch, and, and then switch, the more pro. simple one. I make it happen. You can do yeah. it. I'm just yeah. saying. We'll see. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to the Nindies for sure. Um, I know a lot of people have very specific. Nintendo IP game requests that they're looking forward to, but for me, it's all about the Nintendo Indies. Um, and speaking of Nintendo, if you still don't own a Nintendo Switch, now is the time to pick one up. I feel On like you're that, attacking me. Uh, it's yeah, Juan. Now is the time to, <laughs> to pick, pick one, one up. up. <laughs> On that newegg.com slash newegg now page, you can find a Switch console package that includes oh, that a $30 good. Newegg gift card, okay. which is perfect for maybe picking up some sure. system accessories or some indie titles. I'm working on the it. The Switch has a huge library time of great limited. games now. It goes beyond Mario and Budget. Zelda. You've also got a ton of fantastic indies like Dead Cells, I do also Into need the to buy Breach, which mom. I love, and Slay Good the times. Spire, which came out on the system today, finally. Um, that game's been getting a lot of hype online. Totally. Uh, the Switch is a fantastic system, and you can get I one for a that. fantastic price via that newegg.com slash newegg now page. I hear you. One. <laughs> I mean, and I've been dying to play uh, Blaster Master. And so not Breath of the Wild? It's, no, I mean, again. You're like, I can't I, wait to have a Switch to play I want, Blaster I want, Master. I want modern, classic, retro, platforming, jumping tank. And, and actually, just after our Mother's Day stuff, too, uh -huh. I, like, it sounds like Mom is on board Switch train. I had, uh, I had a friend of mine who said that when his son was particularly tiny, he would fall asleep on him and he could just play Switch around his back while he was sleeping oh, on him. That's so precious. I was like, oh man, my tiny human never did that, but that's, that sounds great. That's what I was like trying to do. That, that's what got me back into like mobile phone games. Was there you like, go. Oh, I need to do stuff in tiny person. But um, actually I, after, after the show, because we just have so much stuff to talk about, I need to pick your brain because I think mom might be torn between Switch and Oculus. Ooh, we can talk about that. So maybe join us after this live stream <laughs> to talk about more this hardware is and Juan gaming and stuff. I do all day. But yeah, um, that made me real excited. She was like, oh, well, I hear there's like a campaign mode for Beat Saber now, mm -hmm. and I don't even need to be tethered to anything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, before we wrap things up, we wanted to let you know about some of the deals currently live right now on Newegg.com. You can find all of these by clicking the banner on the bottom of that Newegg Now page. A lot of these week's deals are part of Newegg's Father's Day promotions because that's on Sunday, June 16th. Coming so, up. So keep that in mind as we talk about our personal picks, because that's what we had in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe you'll see something that's a good fit for the dad in your life. Maybe. Yeah. So uh, for me, whenever yes, I off. think uh, technology for parents, I, a oh, lot sure. of times now I think smart home yeah. devices because they take totally. a lot of the regular, everyday, uh, more mundane tasks off your plate so that you can focus on other things. So yes. one of the things that's on sale right now is the Google Home Hub. This is a smart home hub from Google with a seven inch touchscreen display. Mm -hmm. It lets you view today's reminders, stream videos, and watch your smart security cameras footage. It, it, it interacts with many, many, many different things, whatever you have in your house. It's got voice control. You can ask it questions. It also has voice recognition. So I have, um, I have a device like this in my house, and it knows if I say, hey, Google, good morning, it will give me my calendar events versus you're just setting up if Google someone Homes else. I know. I'm sorry if you're listening to this and you have Hot one. word. Um, but no, it's, it's very <laughs> useful. It can access your music, your photos. It's a great smart home choice for those of you who have a lot going on in your digital life and Tying especially on Google's platforms. Ties it all together for you. Um, and going further with the smart home gear, you can also check out the Nest Hello video doorbell. So at this point, we've talked a ton about video doorbells on this show. Yes, we have. You know how we've it works. Them. The Nest Hello has oh a 1600 by 1200 resolution up to 30 frames per second night vision nice. um, functionality and a 160 degree diagonal field of view. So it's pretty high end and nice. Perfect. And then swapping it over away from smart home Gotta to more gaming more focused stuff. On. Dads for, play games too. For the fun dads. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking for something that is a little more gaming focused, how about the LG 32GK850G gaming monitor? 
It has a 31 and a half <laughs> inch QHD panel with a five millisecond response time and a 144 hertz refresh rate. It's got an ultra thin bezel and it has LG's sphere LED lighting on the back for that super cool ambient glow. And that's on a great deal right now. Yeah, that is, I mean, it's some good looking yep. hardware right there. It sure is. Oh wait, well, you've got one more. Yeah, so last but not least, um, I wanna check out the deal on the Corsair K68 mechanical gaming keyboard. It's full RGB, Cherry MX Red switches, uh, but what really sets it apart is that it's dust and spill resistant. For dads! For dads! Uh, this is a keyboard that Corsair <laughs> advertises with water raining down on it, if you've seen that. And here in New Egg Studios, uh, they previously tested it by pouring Mountain, Mountain Dew. Dew on it, and it still works. Oh, your gamer fuel. <laughs> so if you happen to be spill prone, or you have spill prone people that live in your home. Tiny humans um, are very spill prone. Right, or maybe the dad in your life just happens to be spill prone. Check out the Corsair K68 keyboard by clicking that banner on the bottom of the newegg.com slash newegnow page. And that that covers it for my picks. How about just, you, Lauren? Just real quick, did I ever tell you, hmm. you know that rock hat that I inherited from yes. you? Yes. One of the first times that Lex was sitting on my lap, just dumped milk <laughs> right into it while I was trying to show no. her stuff. Like, and she was like, she climbs in, she's super adorable. She's like two years old. She's got her little sippy cup and she drops it in that way that those cups just mm. go bloop. No. And so we dumped it all out and thankfully it, it came it, back. But it, it survived? Was, it, was, it was fine, it's, it's doing fine. Wow. Took, took some doing. Doing fine. My little dude, if he even comes into my office while I'm streaming, he will find a way to shut down the whole stream. Yes. Always. Hey, Every what's time. this cable do? Yep. Every yep. time. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. So um, I, I uh, picked out a couple things for Father's Day too. Some stuff on sale right now, including I, I saw this and and like my heart sang. Okay. This was going to be my top pick: the Tailgater GT Portable Barbecue Grill from Grill Time. Very It's a grill man. that weighs less than nine pounds. <laughs> Grilling surface of twelve point five inches. It's a charcoal charcoal grill with the convenience of gas, and it heats up in just four minutes. That's cool. I really wanted to do like the full on infomercial script presentation yeah. for that. Okay. Next up, I'm an audio geek. I'm an audio nerd. If uh, if there's a good set of headphones on sale, I'm going to want to talk about them. So you should check out the Bose QuietComfort 35 wireless model. Discounted today for fantastic audio performance, excellent noise cancellation, mm -hmm. and built-in Google Assistant with all kinds of voice commands. It's a great headset, especially if your dad travels a lot, too. Uh, these are yeah. like the airplane gold standard of uh, you know, uh, drowning out your airplane engine noise. Totally. And last but not least, have you ever seen one of those commercials on TV where people like, like get dad a new pickup truck for Father's Day? Yeah, who gets cars for Father's Day? I think those are crazy. I, again, like giving- Really rich people. Giving <laughs> vehicles as gifts, right? Okay. <laughs> so wouldn't the dad in your life wanna pick out their own truck? Probably. My dad would not be on board anything I would pick out for him, especially in New Mexico. Like he, he's got his Tacoma, he's fine. Wouldn't he rather have something more practical like an electric scooter? <laughs> well, good news, Newick has the Segway 9Bot ES4 kick scooter ready for the dad in your life. Wow. It's a scooter with 800 watts of power. Unfortunately, not enough power to hover over water. You need more power for that. But wow. what it does have is a top speed of approximately 19 miles an hour and a range of up to 28 miles. Folds up for easy transport, mm -hmm. comes with a second battery. Again, 28 mile range, so you can go 28 miles in, in one direction. Mm -hmm. Second battery, 28 miles. Second battery for your portable grill maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have this mental image with, the, with what I picked right. of like, Dad irresponsibly wearing noise cancellation headphones while Ooh, zipping around sir. in traffic at almost 20 miles an hour. You know and what? The portable we here at Newegg do not recommend that. Barbecue strapped to his back so he can deliver the tasty grilled goodness okay. while dangerously listening to music. Don't do that. Don't don't <laughs> don't 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 electric scooter and noise cancellation okay. headphone at the same time. But you could, but you shouldn't. But Probably you could. Not. But cool. So one last thing before we go today, <laughs> we want to make sure that everyone knows about the big days of play sale that will For be sure. kicking off tomorrow and running through E3. This is a huge blowout sale from Sony starting yeah. on June 7th, and you'll see consoles and games for like insanely good prices.
-hmm. you'll be able to get a one terabyte days of play limited edition PS4 for $299. Mm. Uh, that's a special design in steel, black, and silver with a matching controller. And some of Sony's best games, like God of War and Spider-Man, will be available so for just $19.99, which so is insane. Good. So make sure you check out Newegg tomorrow mm -hmm. and during E3 for those days of play deals. Mm -hmm. Um, we know that there's like, you know, cool stuff on the horizon, but the stuff right now for console stuff, yeah. good pricing, jump on that. Click on the banner, bottom of the New Egg Now page to see our hand-picked choices yep. that we just talked about. And uh, also be on the lookout tomorrow for some cool stuff too. Yeah, okay, so that's gonna do it for us today. Remember it's to subscribe show. to New Egg Studios on YouTube to keep up with all the videos that we've got coming up and visit GameCrate.com starting yeah. this weekend for New Egg's full E3 2019 coverage. This has been New Egg Now, and now you know. Bye guys. Bam.